Welcome everyone, my name is David Broman and this is a video about redness allocation and it's actually a series of two videos. So the first one is about liveness analysis and how to construct a interference graph. So if you haven't watched that video, please take a look at that first. And in this video I'm going to tell you how to use this interference graph to construct uh, the actual uh, redness allocator using graph coloring. So let's dive into that. But before we start, well, let's do a, just a recap of the overview. The first step is liveness analysis, uh, where you figure out which variables are live at the same time. And if you know which ones that are live, then you can make sure so you do not allocate the same physical registers when they are live at the same time. But to be able to do that, we need to construct this interference graph. And this is an undirected graph. From that, we can then do the actual allocation. And this is today's video and that is about register allocation using graph coloring. So the idea is that we basically want to color all the nodes in the graph such that no neighbors have the same color. And this is called the graph coloring problem. It's a mathematical problem and it's well known to be NP complete. So we are we have little hope to have you know, an optimal uh, algorithm for this but instead we resort to heuristics but that works also pretty well in in practice actually because this kind of register allocator is used a lot in compilers when you do a ahead of time compilation but it's not so much used in compilers where you have just in time compilation because then it's really important that the register allocation in itself goes really fast other kinds of register allocators are so-called linear scan algorithms that i will not talk about more today just to recap a little bit here so we have this running example that i presented in the first video with this foo and there's a parameter and this is a small while loop. And this is to then the control flow graph for that particular example. You see that we have uh, four vertices uh, and each of these blocks is called a basic block. And from that, after we've done all the liveness analysis, we can conclude that we have an interference graph, this one, where you have four variables, x, y, z, and n. And these are the variables in the program. And they are, have the interference in a way that everything is interfering with everything, but there is no interference between Y and Z. So the whole uh, algorithm basically fits on one page. And the algorithm is based on the information written in a book by Apple called the Tiger Book. It's from 98, but it's still a, pretty, a good reference. So please read it. So I have tried to here to make it a little bit more formal to write down the algorithm more as an algorithm on one page. And uh, we will use also a helper function here. This is called edges where we basically uh, get out the edges from certain vertices V. So we'll use that in the algorithm. The algorithm is called graph coloring by simplification. And uh, it starts with that we assume that we have a machine that has K number of physical registers. So say that it's a machine with 16 uh, physical registers, we have the value K there will be 16. And then we have two parts. We have this S here, which is the set of all variables. And now we're talking virtual registers that should be spilled. And to start with, we say that this set is empty. And then we have this stack here, R, that we will use during in the algorithm itself. And it's initialized also to be the empty stack. So the first step here is the construction phase. So we are basically constructing in the graph G using liveness analysis. And this is basically the previous video. And then also we save this spill set. To begin with it's empty anyway, but we save that in S prime because we will use that later on in the algorithm. The second step is called the simplify step. What we're doing in the simplify step is that we are taking the graph, picking node by node and then constructing this stack here. So we're pushing things on the stack while we are deconstructing the graph. So in the end here, we have a graph consisting of no edges and no nodes, but we have pu pushed everything to this stack. And then in step three, we will then do the actual register allocation by popping from this stack. So we're popping over and over again from a stack and then reconstructing the graph and at the same time also giving colors to the nodes. And just to remind you that colors here mean physical registers. When, when I say color, I also mean a physical register. And then in the end, the fourth step, if we, we check if we can end this. So we are iterating 
until we see that the spilling here is equal to the, what it was in the previous step. So basically we are iterating to reach this fixed point on spilling. Okay, let's look at the first uh, step here now. We have this running examples where we, where, that we looked at before. So we have four variables, x, y, n, and z. And let's assume that we have a computer now with just three physical registers. So we start by having this, uh, the empty set of uh, spilled and the stack is empty. And then we have the actual graph G here. Now let's go into the simplification step where we will then repeat over and over until we have removed all, all nodes from the graph. Before we start the first iteration, it looks like this. Then we should pick a node. So you see here, the first step is if there exists a node V where the number of edges, so that is the edges going out from V, is less than K. So if we look at, for example, N here, if V was N, it means that it has three outgoing edges, but K is three, so K is, three is not strictly less than K, strictly less than that. So we cannot pick N, we cannot pick X, but we can pick Y or Z because they have two, two outgoing edges, and which are less than K. All right, so we pick one of them, and let's say we just can arbitrarily pick one of them. It might affect, but it's a heuristic, so we don't know what is the exact, exactly the best way. So we pick one, and we, let's pick Y. And after that iteration, we have still no spilling, so S is the empty set, but now we push this on R. So let's look at this line. This means that we came in here on the true branch, and then we push, push this triple here. So you see it, the first part of the triple is the, the node. In this case, we picked Y, so that is why we have Y here. Then we uh, see here that we have edges, but we have this underscore. We, what we should store here are the edges, that we means this edge and this edge. But it's actually stored here, but it's just to save space on the slides. Uh, I just use an underscore, but it actually means that we have saved them there. And then we have this tagging color. So here we mark and say that, okay, this item that we push on the stack is actually going to be colored. And then the next step is that we are updating this graph. If we do that, we will get this graph. So we see here, we, if we look at what is going on here, we have G here. So the number of vertices, we remove V from the set of vertices. This has disappeared from this graph. And then we remove the edges, all outgoing edges from V using the set difference. And this is why these two edges disappear. So that's why we have this graph now. Then the next step is we have this graph and now we should again pick a node where the edges, number of edges are less than K. And you see that the number of edges of all of them are just two here. So we, so we can pick any of them. So let's, let's pick X here in this case. And then we still have no uh, spilling and we push on the stack. So here at the top of the stack, we see X, we have the edges here and it's going to be colored. So we just went in here again and we have that. And then when we are removing V and the edges, you see we remove these two edges and X. So we have this graph here. And then you can just continue. So the, in this case, it becomes fairly simple. You take one at a time. And, and you can imagine that we took Z and then store the, remove the edge and store that. And then we have just N left without edges and then we push that. So we, we have this overall now simplified graph where the graph it does not exist anymore, but we have pushed all the information on R. So the next step is to then assign colors or decide to do the actual spill. We do that by having a while loop where we check until this R is empty. So we're continuously popping from the from this stack now. So let's see if we're popping and we're popping it to T. And now T is N. So N is the vertice that we have here. That was on the top of the stack. So that's why we get this T is equal to N. And it says that if this matches, then we go into the true, true branch. And what is actually matching on is this, this tag here. So we have see that if it matches, it's the color, it is right now, then we enter here, and then we should start to build up the graph again. So we now use the vertex V here and extend with the edges. Uh, so it was empty from the beginning, but now we are reconstructing it. So we get this. So we basically get one uh, element, one vertex, but there were no edges in the last step when we pushed it. The next thing is that we want to assign a color. 
to this. So we want to give it an actual register. So we have used this C here stating which color we have. So I, I pointed out here with the color, so this is green in this case. You don't have to have use colors, you, you just use you know, natural numbers like here. So it says N is equal to one. So then we give, give the register one here. So what is going on on this line? Well, we, here we do the assignment and we pick one N where this should hold. For all edges in E1, then, then we should find a new color N that does not exist any of the neighbors. We should pick a color where there are no neighbors with the same color. And since there are no neighbors in this case, we can pick any color and that's why we picked one. But it would be more complicated, of course, when we have uh, more nodes. Okay, that was the first step. So and then now we're picking the next one on the stack. Now we have C. So what, what happens then? Well, we go through all the steps here. We go into this branch here. We reconstruct the graph. Now we have an extra edge, right? So we have this edge and we pick a color and we cannot pick then green because that is uh, something that exists that is in the set of these edges. Let's pick number two, which is blue. Then we have, we are next one, X here. Uh, what can we do? Well, we also pick a new color, um, which is X, uh, which is red. And it must not be, it must be a color that is not, does not exist here, like not green and not blue. So we picked X here uh, to be red. Right, and the next step is then that we have Y. So the question is, which color can we select here? So let's uh, make a small exercise. Which color should uh, then we have for Y? If we look at the graph here, I, I show that there are two edges here, but we don't know which, which node we have here. So think about that for a moment and, and pause the video and then uh, uh, play again when you think that you have an answer. All right, so the, the color must be blue, right? I mean, you could pick a, a fourth color, but that would be not a good idea because then you're using a register uh, unnecessarily. Okay, so this was the case where everything went well when we just uh, could push things on the stack and, and it assign colors. But assume now that we have the same setup, but we only have two registers. Then we see directly this is basically impossible to put everything on physical registers. So you need to have a way to spill. When we have do this repetition here, we see that there is no, no chance that we can have the number of edges is less than K because the number of edges here are like three or two and that is not strictly less than two. So we'll get into this part here. We, we need to select one node to spill and we can actually select any node. Good idea to select something with a fairly high degree, typically, but it, I mean, it's heuristic, so you, you never know. So we select something here and we say that that is W and then we just put this on the stack. You see here that we have W and now we tag it to be spilled. So that's the main, main difference. And after that, we remove the element from the, the graph in the same way. So this is the same procedure. Sometimes we will spill it and sometimes we will uh, color it. But the tagging makes the difference. If we get this and we are, you know, somewhere popping now from the stack, we do not match with the color, but instead we match it on this spill, we get into this part. And what is happening here is that we're trying to now to allocate. We are doing so-called optimistic coloring. It's the set builder notation. We're looking at all the nodes that are connected uh, here in the, this new node, the color of them and create a set of that. So we see all the different colors, all the registers actually used that are directly connected to this vertex V. If these are together less than K, then we can actually do graph coloring. So sometimes you can do graph coloring even if it's spill. In such a case, we just do the same thing, we reconstruct the graph and then pick another color. But if we cannot do that, if all the registers are already used, then we have to do actual spill. And then we add the spilling variable to the set S here. The last part is what we're checking, has anything changed? Have we spilled anything more? If we have spilled anything more, then we have to restart and we actually do redo the liveness analysis. There are different choices here, but one way of doing that is to restart now. So then the question is, why? do we restart in such a case? Think about that. Well, the reason is that typically when you're spilling, you need some temporary registers, the writing to the register before you write to memory. 
You can, of course, always have one register allocated for that, but it's kind of unnecessary because then you cannot use it for anything else. So the idea here is that you first try to use all registers, but if it turns out that you want to do the spilling, you need to have that register, but that means that you're more constrained, so you have to redo the actual analysis. This was the basic thing about how to do register allocation in general. But uh, if you're compiling for some platform, say x86, you have quite a lot of constraints on the ISA. There is a calling convention that you put the values when you're calling a function in certain uh, registers, like RDI, RSI and so on. And then they cannot easily be used for graph coloring. So you need to handle that in some smart way. And there are two cases here. One is when the function is called, so you have to use that and keep the values in the parameters or you have to put them as an argument when you are calling. So in one way you need to handle this in the graph coloring approach. Another thing is that we have these special registers. For example, we have RAX or RDX when we're doing multiplication or CL for shifting and so forth. And we need to encode that in some way. And also we have these special caller saved or callee saved registers that we need to treat so they are actually respected by the, by the register allocator. And, and also note that in x86 all registers that are not callee saved can be seen as caller saved. So we are often just talking about callee saved in x86. So how do you do this? The solution is what's called pre-coloring. So we are using some pre-colored registers to solve this. The good news is that by doing that, we can use the same standard uh, register allocator, just putting in some constraints. So one thing is that before the liveness analysis, you should include all the physical registers as pre-colored variables. So you basically extend the number of virtual registers or variables with pre-colored variables. We should include them and then create defs and use sets. So this is how you put in the, the constraints using defs and use for them. And you can handle that both parameters and special registers in this way. We also, when we are calling things, we need to make sure that some of these colleague saved registers are interfered. And you can also use the def sets to do that, to mark that they, these variables are actually dependent on them. And you can use the Def sets to encode this constraint as well. By doing that, the register allocator will respect these constraints while doing the register allocation. And before you start, you have to give all the pre-colored nodes unique names. This is where why it's called pre-coloring. And you also have to make them all interfering to each other. So these are the kind of the main ideas about pre-coloring. But check out the Apple book if you want to know more details about this. Right, so this was the second video about register allocation. So I kind of skimmed the surface of doing register allocation and uh, I hope you learned something. Please check out the other videos also about compilers. I, I'm constantly adding a few more videos. So if you have any ideas or other things you want to have, please just add a note in the channel. Otherwise, please subscribe and have a nice day. Thank you.